Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Wednesday, November the 2nd, 2022. And I guess our song for this morning is, Where, oh, where have my Astros gone? Where, oh, where can they be? Uh, boy, better luck tonight, guys. Uh, we'll be we'll be uh, in touch with that. So if you didn't see it last night, it's kind of a rough night. Uh, anyway, this morning, we look at the Breakfast Biscuit entitled The Mozambique Drill. The Mozambique Drill comes from Matthew 15, Isaiah 29, and Mark chapter 7. And please understand this morning, this is an analogy, okay? Just an analogy. So try to remember that. So back in the day, uh, I was uh, taught the old rule, the common saying, understanding was that 80% of the people shot one time with a handgun will survive. 80% of those shot more than once with a handgun do not. So that was what led to the quote unquote double tap or hammered pair, et cetera, the boom, boom, shooting like that. Then uh, when I entered the few uh, pistol competitions that I've ever entered, IDPA and USPSA, uh, my big accomplishment was not to finish dead last. That, that was a big day for me to not finish last. I went there with people who finished middle of the pack or, or closer to the front, but I always <laughs> didn't. But uh, I, I ran into something called a Mozambique drill, and I just couldn't resist. I had to figure out what in the world uh, is that about. So I'll share it with you this morning. The Mozambique drill is also known as the failure drill or the failure to stop drill, and informally, two to the body, one to the head. It is a close quarter shooting technique that requires the shooter to fire twice into the torso of the target, known as a double tap or hammered pair to the center of mass, and follow up with a more difficult head shot that if properly placed will instantaneously stop the target if the previous shots fail to do so. And I thought to myself, where on earth could that have come from and why on earth is it called a Mozambique drill? Well, according to, this is from Wikipedia, according to anecdotal history, the technique originated with a Rhodesian mercenary named Mike Russo engaged in the Mozambican War of Independence, 1964 to 1974. Fighting at the airport in Lorenco Mark, modern-day Maputo, uh, Russo rounded a corner and encountered an enemy combatant armed with an AK-47 assault rifle at 10 paces, give or take 7.5 meters. Russo immediately brought up <clears throat> his Browning HP-35, you and I would call it a Browning high-power pistol, and fired two bullets into the target's upper chest, usually enough to incapacitate or kill outright. Seeing that the fighter was still advancing, Russo attempted a headshot that hit the gorilla through the base of his neck, severing the spinal cord. Russo related the story to an acquaintance. <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting and gets into mainstream gun culture. Related this story to an acquaintance by the name of Jeff, Jeff Cooper the founder of the Gunsight Academy Shooting School, very famous person in uh, ballistic circles, <clears throat> who incorporated the Mozambique drill into his modern technique shooting method. So in competitive shooting, this drill should be accomplished from concealment with your pistol under your shirt or in your holster or whatever. That drill should be accomplished in, uh, in competitive circles in three seconds or less from concealment. World-class people are doing it in 0 0.9, 0 0.8 seconds. So, what's that got to do with anything biblical? Uh, well, if you really, really have to stop a threat, uh, the Mozambique drill is the way to stop the threat. There is a greater threat than a physical person with a gun. His name is Satan. And that leads us to what we cover this morning. God says three times, boom, 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 in Scripture, that strongholds only come down in the power of the Holy Spirit applying Scripture, and God is not firing a gun at you. Please get the analogy this morning. God is not firing a gun at you. God is trying to get your adversary off of you, <clears throat> which is why he says something in Scripture three times. You ready to hear what he says? Matthew 15. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Isaiah 29, from whence the Matthew passage came, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed 
their heart far from me, <clears throat> and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And Mark chapter 7, verse 6. So now we have Matthew, Isaiah, and Mark. Jesus answered them, Isaiah prophesied correctly about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. <clears throat> Many times, people that are difficult to defeat in a conflict are high. People who are honoring God with their lips and not with their real lifestyles, in the words of DC Talk, uh, that's simply hard to believe. But people who are honoring God with their lips and doing something else with their lives are in the stronghold of Satan. They are under his influence and they are deluding themselves. Scripture says that we must be awakened, and God is firing enough Scripture three times in Scripture on the same subject to get Satan off of us, to get our minds clear so that we can repent and follow after Christ in truth and in spirit. Sunday morning at the Holodome, our home at the Holodome, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I will be preaching a message and call the, called the Wheat and the Tares on one of Jesus' famous parables, Who is a Real Believer?, and who is not, and how do I know if I am or if I am not. So I want you to ask yourself, why would God tell me something three times? Because he loves me, because he's really trying to get through to me on something that's important, and because he is trying to get my adversary off of me because I'm being held captive if I am honoring him with my lips and not actually following him with my lifestyle. See you at our home in the Hollow Dome at 10 a.m. Sunday. <clears throat> Let me lead you in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the fact that you do take the time and expend the effort to get through to us and get our adversary off of us so that we can breathe freely and be in fellowship with you, reconciled to you by the blood of Jesus. God, I ask you this morning to let the scripture take root in our lives, what you've said three times. Let the Holy Spirit hammer it into us, convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Turn our hearts toward you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.